Okay, we're using the um, Medtronic balloon here. Um, again, I like the um, I like the navigation properties of these balloons because you can do challenging cases. And if you, I don't know if you can see the CT next to me, but it this is a really complex frontal because it's got a lot of cells. So, in actuality, this this cadaver head doesn't really even have a frontal. I'll try to move this forward. She has a superorbital ethmoid and an inner sinus cell. So this will be great for the drill out, challenging for the, uh, challenging for the, to do a frontal here. So we're gonna see if we can get in there. So you see here, I'm trying to get in, but can I change the, um, can, I, can I mold it or is it just one? Do, do we have a 90? So I'm gonna come in here to try to get access, if you can see here. And I'm gonna to try to fracture this unsnit forward a little bit so that I can feed the balloon. Let's see if I can clear that up for you. You want me to use that for the maxillary too? Can I see the maxillary balloon? So we could also transilluminate, which would be like the Intellis balloon. Um, I, I think transillumination works fine in the office and in the OR. I think when you have a, a totally opacified sinus with a lot of disease, like in a fungus ball, then that can be a little bit of a challenge. I to just pull the incident forward here so I can get in with the balloon. You can see it attract. Dr. Davis has found us a nice challenging head. So sometimes if you're struggling, you can take the bullet down as well to kind of create more space for yourself. Be right in there. Okay, balloon. Come back out. Balloon again. Come back up. I'm going to use an angled scope here. Oh, wait, did I take the post out? Do you want to describe what you're doing? I'm switching to an angled scope. I got gotcha. you. Oh, so it does, it comes out with a post. It's, it's showing up, it's just really small. It's a little green dot. Yeah, and that, that's showing the tip of the, uh, of the balloon, yeah. I like the crosshairs too. Thanks for changing that, Scott. 
Let's go in here again, just see if I can show it to you. So yeah, th so I can see the uns I can see the unsinted process right there. See that? That's the natural osteum. The uncinate had kind of folded in. So what I would do in this case, so is you, use a ball tip seeker. You can go ahead too and progress. So you want me to move on? I want you to move on. Thank you. Okay. That'd be great. Okay. But I know. So I know Doug wants to show you the his handiwork here. And it's important to see. There's the natural there osseum go. there. So that's what we would use for the balloon. Okay, let's see if we can do the frontal. Again, th this frontal isn't really a frontal. It's a, a cadaver that Universe. we have as a... Gotcha. So we're gonna use the 90 degree. Then we'll try to do a sphenoid real quickly. So I'm not, sh this would be... I'm not sure if I would actually use a balloon on the, if this patient had this anatomy. It kind of supports what we were saying earlier about how important it is to get a CAT scan of these patients before you consider a balloon or any procedure. So it's nice and big there. I'm looking for the super orbital ethmoid. You want to get behind that cell. So you can see here the uncinate kind of attaches into the bulla. So rather than screw around with this, this is what I would tell you I would do. If I had this patient, I would actually take down the bulla and then balloon it, and it's not ideal at all for an in-office balloon with these cells. But we can't go yeah. into the superorbital ethmoid. So now I'm in the superorbital ethmoid. But I'm limited. See, I'm, I'm hitting up against a cell. So rather than try to push through, I'm going to go do the sphenoid. That's okay. as far as I can go. It's not going to balloon. Do you want a zero scope? Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna go look up into the, there's the superior turbinate, right? So I'm gonna go in here. I'm actually gonna nab with, mostly on the axial. And I'm just palpating around until I drop into the sphenoid. And Doug, what image are you looking at? I'm looking at the axial image, which is what I said. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so, and I, I, that was very atraumatic. I just kind of fell in. Go ahead and balloon. Deflate. Okay, so there's the sphenoid. I can advance a little bit more, but I'm, I'm hitting up probably against the cella there. Uh, this natural osteum is actually fairly high. Go ahead and balloon again, relatively. Correct. So when I'm doing the sphenoid, I'm, putting the, I'm lateralizing the middle turbinate a little bit. I'm looking for the superior turbinate, and then I'm going medial. The superior turbinate has a lamella, just like the middle turbinate has a lamella. There's the basal lamella of the middle turbinate, and there's a basal lamella of the superior turbinate, which starts to fold, starts to bend, takes the right angle and goes towards the lateral wall. And right at that bend is usually the sphenoid. Another way to figure out the rough level of the sphenoid is that the level of the maxillary sinus is a good estimation of where you'll find the sphenoid. Now, we haven't done a maxillary introspy yet, but... The, the roof of the maxillary sinus. 
Correct. Just to be specific, yeah. The, the roof of the maxillary sinus so is a good estimate sinus for where the sphenoid the ostium will be. So you've got, at this point, you'll have your maxillary sinus opened. You'll go to the medial of the superior turbinate, look at about the level of the maxillary sinus, drop into the sphenoid, balloon it, and done. 